Hi, this is Henry from Anna Spoiler Recaps. This is episode 12 of Campfire Cooking in Another World with My Absurd Skill. The Guildmaster Willem was looking all serious with his arms crossed while his minions stood next to him. One of his subordinates piped up, Hey, when are those Mukota guys gonna be back? It's taking forever. And just like that, the Salaryman and his oddball gang waltz in through the main door. The Salaryman sheepishly announces their return and everyone lets out a sigh of relief. Willem rushes over and Mukota reports that they've taken out all the wyverns in the plains. Fell adds that he didn't sense any other ones in the area, which means they didn't miss a single one. Everyone's jaw drops at the news, and then they all break out into a crazy celebration. Even Mukota is surprised by the adventurer's sudden outburst. Willem explains that even if all the adventurers in the city joined forces to fight the wyverns, half of them would have ended up as Dragon Chow. The Salaryman is shook by this fact, and Willem goes on to say that they were all worried sick when Mukota and his crew were taking so long. They thought even Fel wouldn't be able to handle the dragons. Mukota decides not to tell them that they were just enjoying a nice meal after their victory, but Fel spills the beans anyway. He even boasts that the wyverns wouldn't stand a chance against him. Mukota's internal dialogue is interrupted by Fel's big mouth, and he realizes that they were late because they were stuffing their faces. The guild leader gave them a look of confusion, but Mukota begged him not to judge him. Suddenly, Mukota's familiar popped out of the bag and made things even worse by raving about how delicious the food was. The familiar's big mouth caused their master to freeze in fear of unwanted attention. Meanwhile, outside the guild hall, one of the city guards announced to the worried residents that the wyvern threat had been eliminated, so they could go home with their hearts at ease. Back inside the guild master's office, Mukota gave more details about the encounter he and his crazy gang had with 13 wyverns. Willem was shocked and asked if they collected them all. The Salaryman confirmed this and even informed them that apart from the finishing blow to the neck, the rest of the creature's bodies were intact. The guildmaster and the butcher were surprised to hear that they landed such precise finishing blows on them given the rank of the wyverns and their airborne advantage. The guild wanted to know if they wanted the wyverns processed, but the Salaryman was only interested in the meat. Willem's jaw dropped at the Salaryman's response, and he asked, Who hurt you man? Who hurt you? Willem informed Mukota that they were interested in purchasing all the other parts from him. However, they didn't have enough funds for the number that he had presented. Willem suggested that the guild would butcher the parts for free and buy half of the materials. Mukota was happy with the arrangement, so he headed back to his room feeling exhausted, as the threat had been dealt with and the business had been taken care of. Later, as Mukota prepared for bed, he remembered that he had not sent his offering to the goddess yet. He opened his online shop to buy the items, and Agni was the first to send a message, telling him to be prompt with his offerings. Mukota explained that he was just about to purchase the offerings for all of them. Nimir sent him a secret message, reminding him that she was the first goddess to bestow a blessing upon him, so the portion of sweets offered to her should be larger, especially Doriaki. She told him to keep the arrangement between them. The goddess of the earth also sent a discreet message, requesting that he send some shampoo and soap, especially for her. The goddess of water also dropped her confidential wish, pleading with him to give her a portion of the meals he cooked, as they looked delicious. Mukuda didn't think they behaved very goddess-like in the slightest. He addressed them all, pointing out that even though they all sent him private messages, the other goddesses would find out their requests as soon as he sent the offerings. They all jolted in embarrassment that they had been exposed to each other. Agni stands apart from the others, clearly annoyed that she wasn't included in their previous discussion. The others try to explain, but she refuses to listen. She then requests that Mukota add a special ingredient, happy juice, to their order. They all repeat their preferences aloud, and Mukota signs off on their requests. The following morning, as Mukota and his companions walk through the city, they become the talk of the town. News has spread of their heroic actions in protecting the city from wyverns. Despite the attention, Mukota feels a bit uneasy as he hears people muttering as he passes by. They eventually arrive at a bathtub store, and Mukota is impressed by the storefront. Once inside, he can hardly contain his excitement at the variety of bathtubs available. After exploring some options, he settles on one that features magic stones to maintain the water temperature. The salesman is impressed with his choice, but assumes Mukota can't afford to pay in cash, so he offers a payment plan. To his surprise, Mukota brings out a heavy bag of gold coins to purchase the bath outright. He further impresses the salesman by refusing delivery, as he has an item box, a rare skill that allows him to carry items with ease. Mukota leaves the store with confidence and joy, informing Fel that they are leaving town to try out the new bath. After their encounter with the wyverns, he no longer feels comfortable in the city. The salaryman scouts out a serene location to set up his bathhouse. Fel declines to join and instead opts for a hunting expedition but not before the legendary wolf puts a protective barrier around him. Mukota uses his earth magic to create a tall wall with an exit for easy access, and Sui's water magic to fill the tub. 
After heating the water with a fireball spell, the salaryman scrubs himself clean and then relaxes in the warm water with Sui. He adds bath salt to enhance the relaxation effect and then drinks chilled coffee milk. Mukota wishes that Fel could enjoy the bath with them. Feeling refreshed, the salaryman decides to cook the wyvern meat. He thinly slices the vegetables and meat and prepares a flavored broth. After removing the scum, he lets the meat cook a while longer before serving it over rice. Despite wondering where Fel went, he decides to prepare another dish while he waits. Mukota finishes cooking a slow-cooked stew, and just as he's done, Sui senses that Fel is on his way back. When an earth dragon falls out of the bushes, Mukota becomes terrified, but he quickly realizes that Fel is the one tracking it. The legendary wolf looks a little disheveled as he explains that the fight with the wyvern left him unsatisfied, so he hunted the dragon to quench his battle craving. Although Mukota panics when he realizes that Fel has hunted legendary prey, the creature assures him that the earth dragon's meat is worth eating and suggests they take it to the guild butcher to process it. When Fel smells the food, Mukota tells him that he has made two dishes with the wyvern meat, which excites him. However, Fel is dirty from his recent battle, and Mukota withholds the food, pointing out the dust on him. He puts a condition that if Fel doesn't bathe, there will be no food. Fel is reluctant at first, but he agrees when he sees the food going into the item box. When Mukota visits the online store, he discovers some pet cleaning supplies and starts brushing Fel to get rid of his shedding fur. However, Fel reminds Mukota that he is not a dog, and Mukota apologizes before splashing him with water. Despite this, Fel is unhappy with the water and Mukota gets an idea to turn Sui into a shower, making it easier for him to clean Fel. As the cleaning continues, Mukota begins to enjoy it more, but gets a little embarrassed when he has to wash Fel's face. Eventually, they use the Sui shower to wash Fel down and just as they are about to dry him, Fel shakes himself, covering Mukota in water again. Despite this setback, they dry themselves off by combining Mukota's fire magic with Fel's wind magic to create a fantasy air dryer. After their cleaning session, Fel looks handsome and Sui comments on his appearance in the evening light. Once Fel is clean, he demands his food, and when he is served, he loves it, savoring the tenderness of the meat and the sweet and salty sauce that is soaked into the rice. They finish their meal discussing trivial topics. The next day, when they bring a dragon back to the guild hall, Willem slams the table in disbelief. Mukota expected this reaction because of the rare creatures he has been bringing lately, and the butcher explains that every part of the dragon is valuable, from its scales and claws to its innards. Despite understanding the value of the dragon, the butcher admits that he cannot handle such a precious and rare monster. Mukota feels a little disappointed when he learns that the butcher cannot handle the dragon. But Fel doesn't care about the butchering as long as they get to eat the meat. Willem interrupts their conversation, contemplating if a fellow guildmaster he knows in a different city can do the job. Mukota encourages him to share more information, and Willem reveals that the guildmaster of Dalin is pretty knowledgeable about dragons. Excited, Mukota and Fel want to know where they have to go, but Willem warns them that it is far from their current location. The journey to Dalin takes them by the sea, and Fel looks forward to trying seafood on the way. Mukota is confident that with his cooking skills, the ingredients will be done justice. The guildmaster and butcher are impressed by how simple they are considering their fighting level. Before he departs, Mukota delivers extra consignments of soap and shampoo to Lambert, and bids farewell to other acquaintances. Willem gives him a detailed map showing the roads, settlements, and dangerous areas, along with a letter of introduction from the guild master. Mukota is grateful and sets off on his new adventure. That night, he serves the second dish he made days prior, and both Fel and Sui enjoy it, becoming complete foodies. They ask for another serving and look forward to more tasty meals as the season comes to an end. If you enjoyed the series, drop a like and subscribe to our channel for more anime recaps like this.